You look like a Beatles. All you need is love, love, love. I'm editing a bit today, but um, I just stopped. Good morning, guys. So long time no see. I know our uh, last video was in June, I think, but it was an up and down for us because uh, in June we left for the continent and for two months we've been on the road with our motorhome, traveling from city to city, sort of speaking, in order to shoot weddings. Yeah, then we came back. August was uh, the school start. Late August we came back. And I also recently started a new job and I had to like fly to Madrid and back and forth. And yeah, so basically this is the first video since June. In this this video we're gonna tell you our uh, feedback what 9th of june the 9th of june the 9th of june what the last uh, video on youtube no, yeah not the last but the so yeah 9th of june was our last video we also have a vlog in romanian where i uh, kind of upload more than on this vlog because well it's our natural language and i feel a bit more more comfortable because english is not my 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 native language anyway this video will be about house life here on the island after one year we posted several videos after two months after five months and now after one year we moved here in last year in september and we're gonna give you our feedback so my main point will not be at the end of this video so i'm gonna tell you right right away straight away we love it here after one year we just kind of feel like home here so uh, our kids also uh, it was a struggle for the first four months with them because they didn't speak the language didn't have any friends and of course school was hard but after four months it started to to like be very very good also so for them tia te veo. tia te veo she speaks like perfect spanish no, no, no. she's like winking to her friends now i think tia te veo, tia. Con Paola. Me está mirando, broli. Tía. Y Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As you can see, they already have friends. They feel like home here. If, it, if it's just one takeaway from this video, is this: we love it here. That's it. So now we're gonna go to the beach in the south. I think we're gonna go to El Duque. El Duque. El Duque. We're gonna tell you more about what we expected when we moved here. There is actually a video. So we lived in Vienna. We made a video before we moved to Tenerife what our expectations are and why we're gonna move to Tenerife. I think I'm gonna put the link in the description. And then we had a video after two months, then after five months. And now in this video, we're gonna find out if some of our expectations were fulfilled or not, if they were like topped, and how do we feel after one year. We're gonna go step by step and talk about the weather, jobs, social life, healthcare, school. So all these things from our perspective, a family of five who lived in Vienna for 15 years and before that in Romania. This is the main, the main, the main frame of the video. Being a family of five means that when we go somewhere shopping, we are so undecided what we want. There's a little, I would say, shopping venue or mall near uh, Playa El Duque. We decided today that we don't want to bring anything from home. Yeah, we are shopping a bit for stuff. We are. Yes, we are. Are we, we are. done? Are we there yet? Come on, let's go. It's a really nice sunny day here at El Duque. El, El Duque. El Duque. Let's talk about the reasons why we moved here in the first place. Oh. 
How is it after one year? For us, one of the main reasons why we moved here was the weather. And as you can see, it doesn't disappoint. People are swimming, it's packed with tourists. Of course, this is the south. In the north, there's a different story because in the north, in this period, the spring rains start. So this means that it's going to be raining a little bit more than usual. But still, it's very warm also in, in the north. When we left today Santa Cruz, because we live in Santa Cruz, we had like maybe 23 degrees Celsius. Here are 27. So it's like four, four or five degrees uh, difference. The weather definitely uh, played a major role. I think probably top three reasons why we moved on the island. So it doesn't disappoint. Even after one year, we still love the weather. It doesn't matter if we're in the north or in the south. You can kind of choose, you know, because we live in the north and we know in, in winter times, the weather in the north tends to be a little bit unstable. But every weekend we look on webcams and see how the weather is here in the south and we just drive like 45 minutes from Santa Cruz to here minus the search of parking spots then we stay here for a couple of hours and then we head back home weather wise you wanted to say something about the weather regarding Kalima or whatever uh, there is a Kalima every once in a while but we are not allergic to it so it doesn't yeah. affect us yeah. very much. Some people have like allergies for, for Kalima. Yeah. And Kalima happens mostly now in the winter. It lasts maybe one, two days. For one year since we've been here, we experienced Kalima maybe four or five times. And it wasn't very intense. It's not affecting your, the quality of life. Exactly. So yeah, weather-wise, we just love it here. And uh, we can be out a lot. And think about this. In winter, if it's December, January or February, the sun sets down at 6.30 p.m. So we have about, I would say, 10 hours of sunlight. 10 hours of sunlight a day. In winter, weather definitely is, I think, top three. I'm not, I'm not going to say first place, but top three. And it still amazes us after one year. It's December and we're still wearing shirts and shorts. It's, it's amazing. So we definitely love it. Also, when we talk about weather, we cannot forget about ocean, sand, beaches. Here in Tenerife, uh, all the beaches are free. Public beaches, I think there is no private beaches. There are no private beaches, as far as I know. Of course, we compare this to Vienna because we lived in Vienna for a long time. All these factors made us move here. And after one year, more than one year living here we're still absolutely delighted about this levy wants to tell you a hack now when there are big waves just grab your floaty thingy stay on it when the water comes it will be like a slide it will be so fun trust me try it out hmm? floaty thing the floaty thing you know the second thing that was on our list before we moved here and uh, we that's why we also decided to move here is the lifestyle the people so how is it after one year what's our experience after one year this answer will be in all honesty first because when you move here you tend to see everything like butterflies fly and everything is pink and everything is nice and oh, everything is like wow this is not only related to Tenerife but when you move in another country you tend to see all the good aspects after one year I honestly can say that for 90% it's still the same as the first day so in regards to lifestyle nothing changed much what changed is us because we are no, now more integrated in the system and we tend to live like locals that means that we don't go out every day at the we're not every day at the beach we don't uh, go every day to swim in the ocean uh, so we have our routine but the people are still amazing here like the people from the canary islands the locals are very friendly very nice when we went to authorities like to take care of some documents or to uh, uh, register for certain things or for school even though we do didn't speak the language and in the north is more difficult to to speak English because no one speaks English, no one understands you. They were so eager to help and so eager to be relaxed and uh, always saying, okay, just wait, uh, chill, relax. It's amazing how, how people here um, make you feel at home. That's why I think it's easy to, to be part of the co communities here. It's, easy to, it's easier than in other countries to be part of a community as long as you are seeking it like as long as you're proactive because no one comes at your door knocks and say hey let's let's go out or something like this but once you have friends things are starting to get better and uh, 
you also have a, a feeling about the locals here. You also develop like a sense of belonging. And this is what happened to us also. When it comes to the quality of life or lifestyle, we take into consideration also the traffic here, the queues on the highway, which are virtually non-existent. Maybe you can find queues or maybe you can experience like traffic jams maybe on Friday, but it's not like regular. Usually the traffic is fluid. Usually people don't like catch you in traffic or show you the finger or something similar like we experience in Vienna. Quality of life and lifestyle means for us also that we have a lot of sun hours. Life is cheap here. Uh, after the war and Corona, it still is cheap. It's still affordable, especially for a family of five because we look at every penny. Yeah, so look, now I'm I'm filming this vlog from a beach in the south. So this is this is lifestyle. There is music everywhere. There are a lot of concerts in, uh, in the last months, a lot of events because virtually now Corona here on the island is non-existent. Lifestyle here is definitely an aspect that still amazes us and we are very happy about it. We are, we are also very happy that we found some local tips and tricks and the local restaurants and but this takes takes time you know like it takes time to to get involved um, we've been recently uh, on the beach las teresitas uh, with a group of people cleaning the beach then every month we go out with a group of people like grilling and uh, go on hikings and organizing stuff we have some connections now more than one year ago this adds to our uh, uh, to our well-being here on the island and the lifestyle we love the lifestyle here just simple as that before we moved here one uh, aspect or criteria was oh we're gonna learn spanish well for us this is definitely a fail we haven't been able to learn it except the kids they they learn it they speak it but me and christina total losers i mean we can understand a lot but when it comes to talking, yeah, it's it's difficult. And this is mostly because we've been working in, in a German environment or English speaking environment, and we, are, we, st we still do. This doesn't help. It helps to like our kids, they are in school, so they are surrounded by Spanish speaking uh, colleagues. So it's easier for them then to, to speak the language. But for us, because we don't have many Spanish friends, it's a challenge. Uh, we are not giving up, of course, because we live here and uh, we want to learn the language. Uh, we, we Actually, we learned a bit, so it's not 100% fail. There's still room for, me, for improvement. Our plan in regards to this is to be more involved, like maybe also local com communities, uh, Spanish speaking, to be more intentional about it, to like engage in conversation with uh, Spanish locals. But this is uh, this is a process. It takes time. I didn't feel that it like takes away from our well-being or like our uh, quality of life here. Like this is a huge negative. It's not. You get along. You know, like even I, if I go shopping at Lidl or whatever mall, I can still manage to like put two phrases together. In a way, this is still a work in progress for us, but it's definitely not something that I would say bothers us that much. It is a fail because we didn't learn it for one year or we learned just a bit. But in the end, uh, I remember when we moved to Austria, Christina learned German after around six years, but it's not that of a bigger deal right now after one year. Where are we, honey? El Rancho del Niño. Yeah, El Rancho del Niño. So how are the prices here in El Rancho del Niño? Very weird, because they are very cheap. Yeah, yeah. we are at El Rancho del Niño, and this is a restaurant similar to El Cordero. And next on our list, um, when we moved, before we moved here, were activities. We thought that uh, we're going to do a lot more activities than we did in Vienna. And to some extent, that happen but because we are also working we found out that we are doing these activities for more or less during the weekend so almost every weekend we are out somewhere uh, we go hiking swimming uh, staying at the beach running or something like this so i think in a sense uh, after one year we can say that we are more outdoors than we were in vienna because the weather is so nice 
and the days are longer. It allows you to be more outdoorsy, to make more sports, to engage more in sport activities. Our kids are also more often out. They go out with friends. The weather and everything else allows us to be more outdoors. Like Christina said, probably 300 days a year, good weather. That's why we can be outside. Another aspect that we considered before we moved here was food. As you can see, we are now eating. If you compare fruits, bananas, mangoes, all the exotic fruit, here they taste way better and are also cheaper. Fish, for example, is cheaper. In general, food is cheaper and the taste is good. There are some certain fruits that we can't find here and uh, we had to adapt. At first, it was a bit difficult because I'm a meat eater. Christina is a vegetarian, but like meat, I couldn't find like certain types of meat or or like sausages, uh, ham, but I got used to other stuff. But food definitely is still something that uh, we are uh, happy about here in Tenerife. And uh, we're in Puerto de la Cruz visiting some friends. I just wanted to show you how are the flats here, the buildings here, and and also what the fruit of a cactus looks like. Here they grow like this, and I think these are ripe. But I wouldn't recommend like peeling it off just with your hands. It takes technique. Remember when we ate one? Yeah, we ate we one. Stitches. Yeah. In our lungs. And this is like a typical canary balcony here. Beautiful. So this is a residential building complex, mostly inhabited by Germans. Well, look at this entrance, man. Basically, Puerto de la Cruz is over there, like the downtown and Loro Park and everything. As you can probably see, we filmed this video in three parts. This is all the time we've got. It's the it's a holiday period. Now it's the 25th of December. As you, as you can see, I'm in uh, Santa Cruz. Beautiful weather outside. I'm wearing a uh, uh shorts and t shirts so I'm enjoying the, the beautiful weather. We were talking about food and uh, we came here with uh, virtually no expectation in uh, regards to food. With some foods here we uh, we adapted to them. Uh, of course some of them still are uh, not as good as in Austria but uh, that's another thing. It doesn't bother us that much. In general food here is very very good, very fresh. Uh, I mean in Santa Cruz we have like the, the market Nuestra Señora de Africa. There is a shop there called, I don't know, it's like a fruit and vegetable shop. Very good prices, uh, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables and uh, very cheap. We love the food here. We love the restaurants here. They are, of course, again, cheap and affordable. It's one of the things that uh, we say after one year, we definitely enjoy it as much as we enjoyed food in Austria with some minor differences. But uh, these differences are, are really not worth noticing so let's talk infrastructure when we came here a year ago we knew there is a highway of course we didn't knew but we didn't knew so much about the, the bus system and everything else but now because our kids go to school and they sometimes use the bus here in Santa Cruz and the tram we can say they are very good very well organized also highways are quite good and the roads in, in general are good there are of course some bumpy roads if you go up in the mountains or on Teide and we just love the distances here it takes us only 45 minutes to be in the south I mean everything is in reachable distance even the distance between shops and where you live in Santa Cruz there's always somewhere like a shop like a Mercadona or Hiperdino or whatever so in that aspect compared to Austria after one year we just love it and I mean we also can compare it because uh, this summer we've been uh, in Europe with our jobs with our motorhome two months on the road to Germany Austria uh, Netherlands so we know what traffic means on highways especially in Germany uh, it's it's hell so here 
uh, it's a blessing. I mean, the, the traffic here, it's, it's, it's still a blessing, even in high season. You still have now and there a little bit of jams in the south, but not compared to anything we have, we, we've experienced in Europe this year. And also the island is, uh, is, is constantly growing in terms of infrastructures and development. You know, there, there's, a, there's a project for a motor, MotoGP uh, track, and also I think a Formula One track here in uh, Tenerife. There is a new highway planned in the north, so it connects all the highways, so it will be all around the island. The island is growing, even here in Santa Cruz, the former oil station and everything that is on the ocean will be like torn apart and there will be residential buildings built and parks and children's play areas and all sorts of things near to the ocean. In these terms, infrastructure is constantly developing. So when we came here a year ago, we uh, we came with the expectation that we will spend less than we spend in Vienna. And still after one year, it's the same. We spend way less than we spent in Vienna as a family of five. Even if you think about uh, electricity or heat, we don't pay any heat here. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm in, in t-shirts and uh, shorts, and actually we don't spend too much on clothes either. Uh, I mean, I have this, uh, this t-shirt and this since two or three years ago. So we don't spend a lot on, um, on electronics like we spent in Vienna, on furniture, on uh, clothing. The only thing we spend money for is food. It's around six to 700 euros a month, uh, sometimes even less. Life is still affordable here. Expectation were met in this aspect. The rent uh, is the same as, as it was one year ago. So nothing changed there. Uh, we pay 950 euros for a four bedroom flat. Uh, in downtown Santa Cruz. It's a big flat, including garage. Other than that, we just pay for um, internet, for uh, electricity, which is like uh, 120 euros a month. And we don't have any other expenses. You can find cheaper flats than we did, but that's, that was just our uh, thing. So either way, uh, we think that life is more affordable here than it is in Austria. Let's talk about the medical health care. We've been blessed enough not to use the medical healthcare that much here. I had, I just had some problem with my kidneys and I also take uh, like um, pills for high blood pressure. But here they are like 90 cents because I'm insured and everything else is covered by the government. Most of medication when you have a receipt from the doctor are covered by the, the government. So in Austria, the equivalent of this uh, blood pressure medicine would be 13 euros. So here we pay 90 cents. Uh, so it, there's, there's a huge difference. Also, the medical health healthcare is up to up to date. It's very good, but you have to wait. If you have like selective surgery or something like this, you have to wait like a couple of months. But if you go to the emergency room, they treat you no matter what. So it's fine with that. I had like a blood pressure episode, you know, like a high blood pressure. And then uh, it was like very fast, very, very accurate. And um, I think overall the medical health system is very good. I also have like some private moles removal at the private clinic. And it was, in my opinion, very cheap. I had like 20 moles removed from all over my body for 150 euros. It, it's something. I, I heard from a friend of mine that it's 150 euros. is like two moles, your top moles removals in Austria. So we are happy about the medical healthcare here and the medical system. And I can compare it to Austria, yes. Of course, not all hospitals are like modern or up to date or whatever, but the doctors and the nurses and everyone else is, uh, they are really well trained. They know what they are doing. So yeah, uh, we are happy with that. When we came here, we heard about this 75% discount that you have as a resident and we are, really enjoying that because uh, due to our jobs we fly a lot and sometimes uh, you can find better connection via mainland via the peninsula so when we fly to the peninsula for Mad for example we fly to madrid and then to vienna we have 75 percent discount for all the tickets to madrid so we fly like with 10 euros to madrid and then with 50 euros to vienna that was before the war before the oil embargo or the oil prices exploded now we pay we pay a little bit more like maybe 150 euros uh, both ways but still we can apply the 75 percent discounts for all transportation to the mainland and also to the islands of Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza and to Ceuta we really enjoy that we really enjoy that because I also brought a car from Romania and I paid like uh, almost half the price for the ferry transport I'm planning to bring my motor home here so I will pay 
again half the price so for us it's uh, it's genius when we came here we didn't knew that much about the school system here and we just put the kids in school in the public system they didn't speak spanish at all so the first four months were very tough on them and also on us now everything's fine so they speak almost perfect spanish canary spanish they enjoy school we are not that convinced about public school here we think it's not the best we've seen so far it's okay -ish, but we think it's too too loose kids can do whatever they want sometimes and there are a lot of holidays and uh, it's not uncommon here uh, for for a for a teenager to repeat the year we think that school in general could be better public school there are of course these semi-private schools which uh, which are better and also the private school which are the top our kids are in public school so they have like a lot of vacation they do some activities now in corona times they didn't do any activity they didn't went out but now they go to the beach they go to movies they go on go on trips so it's okay in that aspect in terms of what they learn again i'm not that convinced but it is how it is here you you just have to adapt to it in terms of integration of the kids like i said first four months we we really had doubts if this was the best move we made so far but now they don't want to leave from here like uh, we said to, we talked to them and we said okay next summer we'll go again two months in europe no i don't i just don't want to go to europe let's stay here for the whole summer vacation and summer holidays so they love it here they have friends they have uh, they're really well integrated and they speak the language so they've adapted quite well and we are happy about that they they love they, they love tenerife they love the island they love everything about it what about work what about jobs what about uh you know when we came here we had like a budget and we say we can live off this budget for one or two years if we stretch it but soon after two two months we realized this is not gonna be the case because i speak german uh, it was fairly easy for me to find a remote job which i did and i worked for about six months but here on the island it's difficult to find like local jobs if you're not if you don't work in tourism if you don't work like a barista or like a waitress or waiter or if you don't work like a chef you have to really plan in advance if you come here what can you work more and more people work remote from from tenerife uh, i also work in marketing remote for a company that is not in spain you can definitely find jobs in the right area if you work in tourism or worked in tourism you definitely find a job in the south you land here and next day you can you can start working but in terms of if you're a trucker or if you're a nurse or if you're a carpenter I'm not sure if this is the right marketplace for you because everything here is related to tourism. Anything else, it's online. So for us, there's no difference uh, after one year. It, it's quite the same. Job-wise, I think it's gonna be difficult for someone who's not at least, like I would say, 20, 30, 40% internet savvy. So he knows a little bit about how to work online. For others, probably the best market is in the south when it comes to jobs not in the north it's my opinion and the last thing i want to talk to you about after one year of living in tenerife is the social life how has it been how it is it has been uh, very bad at first because we didn't knew anybody basically virtually we just knew one family also we didn't knew any locals but now we're booked <laughs> I mean, we have a very active social life, but with Romanians, because we are Romanians. And this came about because uh, we organize like a get together of the Romanians living on the island. And we do this once a month. For example, last meeting was on the 18th of December. We celebrated Christmas and there were about 60 Romanians gathered in an open space area, grilling and eating. So social life is good now, but only with Romanians, you know, we didn't develop any relationship with the locals yet. Because because it is our fault we don't speak the language this is also a work in progress yeah guys this was uh, our insight about living here for one year now a little bit more than one year i hope you enjoyed this vlog i know it has been a while since we've posted anything but this is due to the fact that we have so many things to do we are still in the process of adapting to the life here i'm not sure how often we will post ideally it will be once a month but as you can see, we have a lot of our, on our minds, but we are trying. Stay with us, guys. And thanks for watching today's vlog. Hope it helps you to like have a 
better overview of what's life here for us at least hope you enjoy it see you in the next vlog bye